Hey everyone, let's make a beachscape horizon. What does that even mean? Um, well, we're just going to make a beach scene and I'm calling it horizon. Of course, you'll see the horizon in the picture, but I'm also doing this horizontal rather than vertical. So I am using a loaf mold, but we're doing this on the bottom and the image will be face up and as we build it. Um, it may not look like that to start because I'm kind of starting in a corner, um, but you'll see that as we go. As I did note, while this isn't a beginner friendly project, doesn't mean you're not welcome to watch and learn and maybe just spark some ideas. But before we get too deep into this, let me introduce my guest host, <laughs> Mr. Soaps and Such. Hello. How are you, Mr. Soaps and Such? I'm okay. <clears throat> I'm just uh, on a break from pet sitting and I'm over here. I stay over at the uh, people's house at their condo and I um, watch the two dogs. And so I'm just kind of in the middle of that coming back over here to do this. It's kind of got me a little, I forgot my headphones. I got these little earbuds. So mm. and that's what's going on with that. Okay. Well, I'm glad you were able to make it back so that we could get this recording done. It's, I appreciate it. Yes. So, um, it looks kind of weird here, me pouring on the side of the mold turned on its side, but um, as you see, there's an edge around my mold um, and many of the popular styles of molds like this. So uh, it lifts it up about a half an inch. So there's a little bit of an incline. And if you have a mold that doesn't do that, you could just stick something under the edge to lift it a little so it doesn't just pour out. Oh yeah. I always have to show off my messes, I guess. I don't know why. I guess I'm just really proud of the messes I make. Um, but um, you'll see me propping this a lot. Now the little twist, I kind of did that off camera. Un I did unintentionally off camera. I meant to show you, but I just showed you again what happens. That happens a lot of times on accident when we're moving a soap and you get weird wrinkles and stuff like that. Um, or if there's a breeze blowing across the soap as it's setting up, sometimes that'll happen. And I decided to put that effect to use and make it look like when the, when the water kind of ripples across the sand and creates that texture. Is that what it looked like to you? Um, it definitely looks like a, like a beach with a, with like the shoreline and the, um, sunset and stuff mm -hmm, coming. Mm -hmm. That definitely has that effect. Well, it's, it definitely like it, this first part to me is my favorite because I think I set up the beach part to look really like the beach. Yeah. The sunset gets a little wacky, but I still like it. Um, you know me, I'm always talking about what I could do better. Um, up on the screen real quick, I am touching on, because I know a lot of people will probably get freaked out to see how little soap I'm heating sometimes in those little cups. I want to let you know, most of the time I'm pouring that from an already melted batch, a larger batch of soap. So I get it to the temperature I want it, and then I'm pouring it into those little cups that typically have my mica and alcohol set up in those. But occasionally I will stick one of those in the microwave, either to reheat or to heat up if I'm using just a small amount of a different kind of soap, like the oatmeal soap. I was only using about, uh, what'd I say? Yeah, an ounce and a half of that. And I'm not even sure if I finished that up. Mm -hmm. But you have to get that sandy texture and um, I think oatmeal does a really good job. Oatmeal soaps do a really good job of that. Yes, I added the apricot seed powder and a little glitter. You don't have to add those. Those are, they're optional, but they help it look like beach sand. Um, and I didn't want to dirty up and, and get out an entire large pitcher and melt a large amount of that. I was only doing one of these loaves. If I were doing multiples, that'd be something different. Um, and it's really hard to heat up small amounts of soap. You can burn it so easily. Um, trust me when I say five seconds in the microwave is enough. Even if the first time you put it in there, you don't think it's enough because it doesn't look like it's doing anything. Keep doing it at five seconds. Anything I'd say two ounces or less. And even like three to four ounces, I wouldn't 
you you don't want to put that in for 30 seconds. You're really, really um, risking it. Um, anyway, I just did a little foam on the edge, kind of, you know, how the waves come up on the mm -hmm. shore and leave that little foamy edge. That's what that little white streak across is, is representing. And I just used a pipette in my white soap that I had left from the shells. I just, you know, a little small amount. And to be honest, that white soap was from a previous soap. I just reheated it. Mm. It was something I, I had done recently. I don't even remember what, but I had recently done one in another soap and um, uh, just a little bit of white. And I had enough left over that I was pretty certain would be enough for the shells and the little um, edge of the sea there. Um, and it worked. And now I'm getting to where mm -hmm. I'm melting the whole the big, good boy. The the big in, um, you know, a bucket of soap, basically. Um, I do, yeah. I add a little bit more later because, um, I didn't. I wasn't finished with the layers. <laughs> I wasn't finished making it yet. I wanted to keep adding. It ends up to be a huge soap. Um, nothing wrong with that at all. It's a it's a just a big soap. So. Mm -hmm. I didn't weigh them yet, but I'm going to guess that they weigh nine ounces, maybe. Yeah, the the and the pictures that you took with the light behind. I mean, you can really see. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The I guess pictures with those, at the end. This one will be thicker because you have a lot of stuff in it. Yeah, yeah, I did, and I could have one of the ways to control that is where you place your shells. On you know, I I like to cover it up how high I want to go. So uh, I like to cover the shells so they are encompassed in the clear soap as the picture. You could leave them on the outside. I think that would look a little weird on this soap. And it wouldn't, wouldn't really, um, it wouldn't protect them. They'd fall off, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Because it's just a thin edge. So, yeah, you have to cover up the shells. So however high you put those shells, that's how thick your soap's going to be. And I just um, estimated a little thicker than I probably could have. Um, but they still came out cool. So I'm not, I'm not hating it at all. And I'm not upset that they're really big soaps. I know some people who are really big fans of big soaps. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, fragrance here. Um, this is the, Oh, what did I, what did I put on the, did I put the fragrance oil on the text? I don't even remember if I did that or if I put the right one. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, because I'm. I just did. Here's the thing. This is the hard part about making um, several videos and and making one and editing one video while you're making another soap. Getting ahead. Yeah, yeah getting a couple trying ahead. to get ahead. And so um, I may have put the wrong one. <laughs> um, okay, so if I put on here that I used Sea Island grapefruit. Um, that's not true because I used Sea Island grapefruit for the opals that just went up. And so I had, I was just editing that one and that might've been in my head when I was doing this one, editing this one, but I used aloe vera, no aloe water and sea kelp, which is by, um, wholesale supplies plus it's one of my favorite of the beach type fragrances. It's not, I, I do like those anyway. I like a lot of the beach fragrances, but it's not too salty. You know what I mean? And I don't mean that in a goofy way. It's not mm -hmm. too salty. Some of them, if they get too sal salty, my head goes to a little bit, almost a little bit fishy. Oh, yeah. A little briny, you know, and a little too much to me. Um, <clears throat> I, I have, I've only had like one or two fragrances I've smelled that were like that. But, um, but this one is more watery ozone um, plus a little bit of, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of fruit. Fruity, but it does remind you of the beach. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so, just hard to see, and it's hard to see right now. But it's, I, I've already know what the final product's going to be because I assembled the video, and I've seen the I've seen the spoiler. <laughs> uh, I do. I think I show a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think I show a little bit as we're going. I keep trying to tip it. So you can see what's going on kind of behind the little edge of the soap there. But I can't tip it too much because I don't want to ruin the soap. So this would be good for that second camera angle we were talking about. If we ever get oh, to have yeah. more sanit uh, from the table angle, this would have been a good example for that. 
Because we have another uh, camcorder that we used for our Valentine's Day soap. A little trivia for you there. If you go back and see that, you'll see that it is a different camera. <laughs> I think this one's a little clearer, but I didn't really go into great detail with the specifics on the settings for that other one because I've used it before. Was that our, you things. mean our first Valentine's? It, I think, did we make it second but released it first or made it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you mean the very first one we released. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we did another, uh, well, did we do another Valentine's? The very edition? first. Yeah, we did. The very first one. Very first video that's published on here. Um, oh, let me real quick take a second to uh, talk about what I'm doing here. Just because I give you some information up top. Yeah, I'm using um, titanium dioxide dispersed in glycerin and just making little waves. Now, the reason I want to talk about it is because I couldn't put everything in the text. There's too much sometimes. And this is one of those times. And this technique, you'll see me use it a lot. You've probably seen me use it in a variety of other soaps. I know I used it in my mini galaxy soaps. Um I don't know what else because uh, yeah, I haven't done the flamingo yet. Uh, maybe some sky. It makes good clouds. It's just the thing is, is you don't ever want to put it. And I did mention it, but I'm going to tell you why. You don't want to put it in the bottom layer. Titanium dioxide sinks, which is also why you see me adding it several times. And it's not that uh, it will kind of give it a little bit of a... Um, of a layered look with it. You'll see, you can still kind of see it under there, but I, um, I wanted to keep putting it on the top. So you have that real, uh, wavy looking effect waves, mean you know, like the waves crashing the, um, the, what's the word cresting. That's it. Little crests of the waves kind of showing. And I really think I achieved that look. Um, here I'm adding a little bit of blue to darken that blue. The, the blue tide is kind of more of a teal and then the key, key West. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Key West blue. That's, um, a little deeper blue, a little more cyan. And I was hoping to get that effect as you go to the back. So it looks deeper as you go out. Um, it's you, it's kind of like doing, um, a gradient, but not really. Um, because I just added it to the soap I already had the color so it would kind of blend into it a little bit um, and I think that looked really neat and then I think also the the uh, titanium dioxide really captured that look of the cresting waves if you did that on the bottom layer because I um, obviously started to say this and then got off on another tangent but if you did that on the very bottom layer of something that's going to sink all the way to the bottom because it just does. And it won't be mixed with the soap. It will, as you're using it, it's going to be mixed in with the soap by the time you're using it, etc. But if it's if it sinks all the way to the bottom, it's not going to mix in. And you're going to have glycerin and titanium dioxide kind of on the outside of the soap. I don't know if that makes sense. But um, just trust me in that you want to use it in a layer or put a layer down first let it set up and then use it. That's so what I do when I make my flamingos is I put a layer of sky down and I am, I embed my suns. Um, and then I put another, I let that dry or let that set up, then put a layer of clear and start adding the clouds so that it doesn't sink down into the blue and sink to the back of the soap. Um, cause you don't want that once it's set in here, it'll be fine. But, uh, yeah, if you, if it's, uh, in the first layer, it's not so good. It's hard to picture. Uh, I mean, you can picture it, but I know it is. It's is hard it to just explain like three it soaps? It's just like three soaps. Yes, it's just going to be three soaps. And this is this is why this isn't a you know particularly efficient way to create a landscape, uh, but it is a little bit easier than trying to do uh, a vertical version of a soap. It's it's it depends on the look you're going for too. Um, some things like if you're wanting a bunch of embeds to stand up and you have a lot of embeds and images to place, um, it's definitely easier to do it this way. Like I did with my snowflakes I don't know, and the flurries. Um, if you're doing multiples, if you, if you need to do more at a time, it goes a lot faster. Obviously, if you have more molds and you're doing a bunch at once and you can do this, you know, part of this layer, let that set up while you're doing the other one. Um, that's, uh, something I've 
done I've done that for a while I don't remember the first um, soap I did in that manner so that it's like the picture is on the bottom of the mold mm-hmm. um, might have been my big galaxy soaps which I haven't done for you guys yet I keep saying I'm going to and then I don't I think because I've kind of gotten an overload of uh, space and mm. universe and galaxy type soaps out there um, and I, I can't just constantly focus on that, even though I would be happy to, but you know, gotta, gotta mix it up a little bit. And, um, mm-hmm. this is one of the, this is the first time, by the way, I'm doing this design. This isn't something I had done before. I'm just going by previous, uh, previous experience with other soaps. And I wanted to try to really get that look of the shoreline. Um, I was... Well, I guess I'll let you know when we get there. I, this was there was a different idea with the way I was going to do the sunset. I didn't end up doing the sunset the way I planned, and at first I was really unhappy with it, <laughs> mm-hmm. as I usually am. But it grew on me, and um, I'm okay with it. Um, oh, I love it actually. It's just I definitely want to go back and then create the other way to do it, um, because I think it can be. I think it'll be a little cleaner looking. Um. And it'll just, I think it'll be a different type of image. I think you'll be able to see the the beach effect a little bit better. Mm-hmm. So, oh, my little warning here is I am taking a knife and I'm cutting around the soaps and making that horizon. I am barely touching that. I'm only cutting the soap. I'm not touching the, um, yeah, yeah, very gently. Don't scratch your mold. But you just think of it as just barely cutting through that soap. You don't want to scratch or poke a hole through your mold. So if that happens, please don't blame me because you are taking a risk in doing it this way. You could probably have used something other than a knife if you were smarter than me, but I didn't <laughs> think of it in time to do it. A stylus would work, would have probably worked just as well. I just didn't think of it in time. Um, so, and the mold was fine. So I didn't end up having a hole in my mold, but I don't want you to get one in yours. So maybe use a stylus, um, instead of a knife. So don't do as I say, or as I do, just. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Just watch me make it. (laughs) Watch me make it and, and then, you know, take heed, (laughs) heed my warnings. Um, so now, now that now it's, as you see, it's kind of the, the ocean got set up enough. I don't know if you saw me playing with the angle of it. It was, it was kind of cool to watch the waves literally moving and it was, it looked like they were cresting, but that was the soap moving because it wasn't quite set up, which is why I back and forth did a little bit. I was trying to encourage it to set up a little faster. Um, now I'm trying to make the sky. I wasn't thrilled. Here's me again, t- talking down about my soap. I'm really not. I'm just saying my opinion on what I would like to do better. Next time I come back in here with a, um, with a lighter blue, um, almost white, a titanium dioxide and, um, into another color because I really was unhappy with the color. I colors I chose for this. It wasn't, I just, it wasn't as bright as I wanted it to be. I should have just done a lighter blue soap. Um, having to mix them in like that and get all fancy about putting a little purple at the top and, you know, making it so complicated, just kind of, it, it made, oh yeah, there I go. <laughs> <laughs> Slow clap. Yeah, yeah, I drop things a lot, but it's it's not fun when you drop something into your own soap. Um, but that's me. Um it's just got a little busy. It, it doesn't detract from the soap once it's made. It really doesn't. But I think, I think it would have been a, um, a little bit of a different look had I done a lighter sky, a light, a little bit lighter or a little less, uh, mixed or swirled, a little less detail, <laughs> That's, <laughs> which is weird for me. Cause I usually like too much detail. Um, so then now we're going to create the clouds. And this is where I really, really strayed from my original plan. Um, and I don't even remember why I did it this way. Um, I initially would have been piping some clouds on there. Not not piping like with a cake piping, not like that. 
but uh, ah, pipetting there is mm-hmm. <laughs> a better term pipetting <laughs> um, the clouds on there. And I should have included, I didn't think about it early enough. Should have included another soap I've done. But if any of you have ever seen my sunset, um, sunset beach soap, it's in an, it's in the oval that I used last week to do those opal soaps. And, um, it makes a gorgeous sunset. And I used a pipette to kind of paint the clouds on with the soap. And this is a little freer and a little more difficult to control. It is the same marbling technique that I've been using, um, in all of my marbled soaps. And I did have some ideas of things I wanted to do using that technique in some landscapes. This wasn't necessarily one of them, but last minute, that's just what I did. I don't, I really don't know what made me do it. Um, (laughs) but I, I, um, have a purple in there that you don't see as much. It's the heliotrope and, and a little bit of uh, titanium dioxide and then the bubble gum pink, which is the new one from Mad Micah's that was available in February with their little lab colors that they're creating little kind of limited editions, which are really cool. Um, I used both of the ones I have in this soap today. And so, um, the bubble gum pink is one of them. And then the part where I lost a little footage here is, is, uh, it was so brief. It was just me pouring, pouring the, uh, marigold in. So, which is their other, there was their second, um, uh, lab colors edition. Anyway, it's really pretty. It's really bright. And it very closely matched enough of my son to kind of let it be a part of this soap. And the suns were made using, um, Mad Micah's, neons. Um, I believe it's a mix of kind of all three of the orangey types and they've got a lot there and their names are mm-hmm. fun. Cheesy poof. Mm, yeah. Um, Oh, I can't think of the, what's the other, I can't think of the others. Brazen hussy is more of a red. orange. <laughs> <laughs> their names are great. Honestly, that's what attracted me to them the first time I was cracking up. And then I was like, Oh, these are really good products for really reasonable prices. So that is why part of why I switched over to them. They're also very, also very, um, they ethically source their materials and have a lot of, uh, biodegradable products that, um, I trust (laughs) (laughs) they're good stuff. Good people. Doesn't hurt that they're in Florida too. (laughs) That is very cool. (laughs) Fellow Floridians. Nothing wrong Unite. with that. Yeah, yeah. So basically this part here is all uh, my marbling technique with just different colors. And you'll see, I do tell you, I've set up the layers in between. Why? Because it's just going to be a big, hot, muddy, muddy mess if I just keep adding color and adding clear and adding color. It's just going to muck it all up. Um, I probably could have even been more careful and gotten a clearer look. Um the end kind of looks like a reminds me of uh, Myrtle Beach, North Myrtle Beach. Oh yeah, at um, on the Fourth of July fireworks explosions. <laughs> yeah, it just you know they do they well they I think they do them pretty frequently out there. But when I, when you're there Fourth of July, it's insane. Pretty much looks afterward looks like a war zone. There's so much smoke and stuff in the air from people on the beach doing their own things too, but kind of gave me that, uh, image. It doesn't look like fireworks necessarily, but it looks like maybe some have been set off Mm -hmm. right before sunset or something. Um, which is, yeah, why I still want to go back and do that other version where I'm just painting on the clouds in different layers still so that there's, um, I like to have a, a, look of depth. I don't want to just paint it on the background and then fill it with clear. I always like to do a little bit of color and then clear and, and a little bit of of a different color or something just so it can, uh, so you can see all the way to the back. Yeah. See through it. Like they're floating too. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly like that. Um, I think the yellow comes out pretty cool and that's just la la yellow. I think I put that up there, but I thought the the patterning of it and I thought the patterning of it looked really cool and then 
it's it's one of those moments. I don't know if you watched my Opal Soap, but I had, did the Leave It Alone, Terry. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah. There's a moment here, like right now. I could have left that alone. I don't know. It was prettier before I did this. So sometimes you have just have to trust that what you did was good enough before you mess with it. It's not bad now. It's it's just, you know, that's one of my little things that after I moved that first one, I'm like, really, did you have to do that? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't yep, know. You did. I did. Apparently. <laughs> apparently I did. It's hard to leave well enough alone. I'm getting ready to pour. Um, I, this was planned to be a top layer. And this just seal it oh, up. Yeah. And, yeah. And then I ended up sneaking in a little pink <laughs> in there too. I guess I wanted to break up the yellow a little. I don't know. I don't know what my thinking was on it. I really don't. It's um, it's kind of weird uh, on the other side of making it. I go in a zone when I'm making something and I'm making soap and I don't always remember what I've done. It's kind of like when I'm talking through here. I, I don't always remember what's come out of my mouth. So I usually uh, turn to Mr. Soaps and such and say, hey, did I sound like an idiot? <laughs> and then I lie. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Just kidding. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yeah, I go in the zone. I guess a lot of artists kind of tend to do that when they're working on things. And sometimes it it uh, has great results and other times it doesn't. So I guess it what it can avoid is getting up in your head too much. And I'll do that too sometimes. Um, get up in my head too much about something and then I'm then I second guess something and change it. That's where you start, you know, oh, I'm going to mess with it again. I'm going to mess with it again. Add something else. It usually doesn't go well. So I try to get to that place where I can just go and see it as an art, as a piece of art and see what it actually needs, you know. Anyway, <laughs> um, fascinating. <laughs> thanks for your help. <laughs> okay, we're at the cutting stage. So, ooh, look at that! You can already see. Yeah, the back looked really cool. I don't know why I didn't show it off a little bit more. Kind of was a neat look. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit as we're. This is just trimming, and I marked. I pre-marked. Uh, you may have noticed in the mold, I had some little marks with a sharpie. Um, one of the things that's helpful in, in creating soaps on the, well, either on the bottom or if you're doing the vertical type, you're, um, it helps to know where you're going to place your embeds if you're doing something with embeds, which a lot of times, unless you're doing a swirl or a layer, um, you want to see where those bars are going to be cut. It's really helpful. So, um, the little marks on the side, I don't always do that, but I I used the marks to help me cut the soap. So I just made little, usually I measure it once it's out of the mold, but I thought I'd save a step and, um, I still didn't cut them evenly. So, um, I'm not the greatest at that. Um, it's more complicated to use uncle Andy's, um, soap guillotine on this type of soap. I just like to do it to keep it the same measurement so I don't have to keep undoing it and going back to it because my measurements are a little weird and um so when I do something across the bottom I usually just mark them on my own and measure it out and yeah I'm not the best at that either yet so but they they came out pretty well one of them's one of them's a little bit bigger than the others that's all and uh so of course as I label that I'm going to put the lowest weight on all of them and then, um, unless I wanted to in print individual labels, which I don't. So, um, see how thick they are? That's a big bar of soap. It's good. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's hefty. It gives it more depth though, too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that's part of the thing. One of the times I get caught up in it a little bit in is I just, I always want to see another layer and, uh, keep building on that. I did a weird thing here. I, and it was definitely just not intentional. I don't know. Um, I show you this soap and then I go to, an, to the next soap. And, and then instead of picking up the third one, I pick up this one again. Nice. So the other one, the third one you do get to see, but stay till I pick it up all three um, and really hold it under the camera. Cause the first time I pick up all three, I drop one 
and <laughs> have to put it all down, pick it all back up again, make sure the one that I dropped, I just dropped it onto the table, but still, you know, if you're spritzing with alcohol, they're going to be a little slippery. <laughs> so um, I'm always taking a chance when I go to pick up three, but it's a cool look, gives you the image of like the whole bar, the whole picture, which is kind of cool. And then um, uh, sometimes I just pick, like if I'm not doing an image like this, this is almost like a triptych kind of a look. But if I'm just doing a, like several soaps of a bunch, of, then I usually just pick up my two favorite, not three. But I like the look of the three. So um, yeah, I did that and then dropped one. Mm -hmm. It wasn't damaged, I checked. Um, but for some reason, yeah, I just end up going back to this soap. So you see this soap a lot, but, um, I am sometimes just trying to get the right angle and show you, uh, the layering and to show you how far deep back you can see in this one, I was really trying to capture. And I think when it gets like, we're looking at a small picture here, when we do, when we're doing the voiceovers, we don't see the, you know, we see it all, but it's small, It's not full screen. Yeah, it's a small little bit of it because you also have to see what's going on with the sound. And um, when I think, I think by the time it gets to the full screen, either your laptop or your TV, which is what I recommend you watch these on. Uh, I think your phone doesn't do any of this justice, uh, either for instructions or the images. But I was really trying to capture that beach part, the waves. And I think it does. I think it, it pretty well does. Um, I was real happy with that. Um, and I will be doing more using that same technique and, and some other various, um, looks to it. I, here's, here's a question for you. So, um, if you were going to add something to this soap, what would you add? I, I know it's very busy, but I came really close to adding a, uh, a black silhouetted palm tree on the front. Oh, really? Yeah. And, and honestly, the, when I got to, to the end and I saw how thick they were, I was like, there's no way I can't add any more to this soap. But think of the things you could add at a beach scene. Um, you know, the little easy black bird silhouette images that you see the seagulls floating and that you see a lot of times in sunset pictures. I could have done that in one of those layers. Godzilla rising out <laughs> of the water. <laughs> An asteroid crashing through the sky. <laughs> you just get one of those ball embeds. <laughs> I asked the question, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, here I am thinking, oh, I could add a sailboat. Or yeah, I or could some add doves in the sky or some dolphin fins. I mean, you could do that too. <laughs> shark fin. Shark fin and then put some, put a shark attack some in there, some blood turtles, in the water. <laughs> some tiny little turtles. Oh, uh, I don't have. Trying to make their way to, you'd have to make them like oh, so tiny. Oh my gosh, that'd you'd be so hard. You'd have to so make the beach a lot bigger. I have turtles and I've done a turtle, turtle beach kind of thing, but yeah. Could you have, you have to do it much deeper? bigger? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit maybe. Um not much though not much um without making a five inch thick soap <laughs> <laughs> hey but know. yeah i could have made the back go up a little bit more the ocean it could have gone a little higher um but i wanted enough room to play with those well, if you clouds. wanted to put like beach chairs or you oh, know, yeah. little uh, extra things on the yeah. on the actual sand itself to make you, it more about the shoreline, like pull the yeah. sun, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah, you could. And you could, I, I think the way you're picturing it and with it being a sunset like that, I think you could get away with doing it as a silhouette too. So you could do that in black mm -hmm. and it wouldn't be as difficult to do. Just the shape, the yeah. basic outline of a beach chair. You could do slightly part. less water cool. and have the sunset, the, the sun smaller. Mm -hmm. So it seems like it's further Farther away. away. Yeah. yeah to yeah. feature the shoreline, but. Yeah, you could. I don't know. You sure could. Umbrellas, beach umbrella. I could have part of it, a beach umbrella sticking out. Or, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, the Godzilla one's my favorite. Though. Submarine patrolling, <laughs> making sure everyone's staying in line. <laughs> Look, if you want out of the box ideas, just ask Mr. Soaps and such. <laughs> I think I'm outside of the box and then I talk to him. There's three. <laughs> There's the three. So the one on the left side of your screen. That's the one I didn't bring up close and I didn't even realize it till I was editing. And I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> I was like, what did I, I brought up the other one again. 
Oh, That's well, his punishment for not eating his peas. <laughs> Next time, do your homework the first time I ask. <laughs> and you'll get featured. For those of you who don't know, that's a throwback to last week's video. You'll have to go watch that now to see why we're favorite shaming the soaps. <laughs> no soap shaming here. <laughs> anyway, um, I think they came out really, really nifty. And... Um, I'm going to really quickly, I want to thank you. And then I want to say something else. Uh, thank you very much for being here. I would obviously love it if you'd like and subscribe, if you've been watching my videos and find some value in them. But I do want to just make a quick note that I will be eventually making a video about these little lights Ooh, that, that I use there, like these little lights that I use behind cool. and how I do that image. Um, cause it is super cool. Look at and that. I wanted to point it out while Changes it changes it. Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. And that's what you'd see that's if you right held it up. That's right before our planet gets here. consumed by the red sun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And I know Mr. Soaps and Such does too, don't you? Yep, I sure do. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.